Welcome to our service of night prayer. This is a quieter, more reflective service intended to be prayed towards the end of the day, a chance to reflect on all that's happened, to commit it to the Lord and to pray for his safekeeping through the night. So I invite you to join in with the words that will come in capital letters as we pray together and then reflect on a passage of scripture. Let's be quiet for a moment and pray. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let's say it together. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading this evening is from Job chapter 23, verses 1 to 12. Then Job replied, Even today my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy in spite of my groaning. If only I knew where to find him, if only I could go to his dwelling. I would state my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would find out what he would answer me and consider what he would say. Would he oppose me with great power? No, he would not press charges against me. There an upright man could present his case before him, and I would be delivered for ever from my judge. But if I go to the east, he is not there. If I go to the west, I do not find him. When he is at work in the north, I do not see him. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. My feet have closely followed his steps. I have kept to his way without turning aside. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. As we come to this Old Testament book of Job, let's try to put it in some context. It is thought to be one of the oldest books written. It is thought to go back to the time of the patriarchs. It doesn't have a fixed date and the author is unknown other than he was an Israelite. But this book is part of scripture and as we know from Paul's second letter to Timothy, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Ezekiel commends Job for his righteousness in Ezekiel 14. James commends Job for his perseverance in James 5. God commends Job as my servant. In Job chapter 1 verse 8 and chapter 2 verse 3, God says to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Here is a book that could have various titles. One of those would be where is God 
when it hurts. And Job was hurting. He had lost everything. Yet he had a deep sense of God's peace. We're told he fell on his face and worshipped the Lord when he realised that he had lost everything, including his family. He goes on to say the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In chapter 2, we find Job talking to his wife and says, Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In the midst of the battles that Job is facing, he cries out, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. Now in these verses we're considering this evening, we, we hear Job crying out, If only I knew where I might find him, if only I could go to his dwelling. Job is convinced that he could talk openly and honestly with God and he would be vindicated against all the accusations of his three so-called friends. But at this moment in his life, he doesn't know which way to go. East? He's not there. West? I can't find him. North? I don't see him. South? There's no glimpse of him. And yet here is Job's unshakable confidence in God when he says, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. Job believes that he has followed the steps of the Lord, that he has kept his way, that he has not strayed from the commands of the Lord, and he has treasured the words the Lord has spoken. Today we are in the middle of a global pandemic which is affecting millions of people across 185 countries. It's interesting to read a report that the sale of Bibles has rocketed as people are searching for something maybe someone. Millions are asking, where are you God? If only I knew where I might find you. Many people are calling out, I can't find him. Desire encourages us to seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. So I ask the questions, where do I look? Where can I find God? Let me suggest four places where we can look. Firstly, I find God in creation. The psalmist in Psalm 19 tells us that the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Back to Psalm 8. We read, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. Paul, when he preached to the people in Athens in chapter 17 of Acts, made it very clear that the unknown God they were worshipping was the God who made the world and everything in it, and he is the Lord of heaven and earth. The Bible doesn't set out to prove the existence of God, it assumes it. The very opening words of the Bible set the scene. In the beginning God made the heavens and the earth. We know that the Spirit of God was involved in creation, and we know that Jesus was involved in creation, for, as John writes, Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. 
hymn, Loved with Everlasting Love, written by Wade Rob Robinson, has the verse, Heaven above is softer blue, earth around is sweeter green, something lives in every hue Christ less eyes have never seen. Birds with gladder songs o'erflow, flowers with deeper beauty shine, since I know, as now I know, I am his, and he is mine. I find God in creation. Secondly, I find God in the cross. In Romans 5 verse 8, Paul declares, God demonstrates his love for us in this, while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Come to the cross and be still for a moment. Hear the cry of Jesus as he calls out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Wait a while and hear Jesus call out, It is finished. In that moment, the righteous demands of God against sin were met once and for all in Jesus, and the way back to God was opened for all time so that we could become a member of God's family through the death of Jesus. As Thomas Kelly wrote, inscribed upon the cross, we see in shining letters, God is love. He bears my sins upon the tree. He brings us mercy from above. I find God in the cross. Thirdly, I find God in the resurrection. On the day of Pentecost, Peter makes it clear that God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death. And as Paul writes to the church in Philippi, God exalted him, that is Jesus, to the highest place. Jesus is alive and we can find and know him as our living saviour. I find God in the resurrection. And lastly, I find God in fellow Christians. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Canon Richard Buse wrote a song and the, cho the chorus says, They are watching you, marking all you do, hearing the things you say. Let them see the Saviour as he shines in you. Let his power control you every day. This evening you may be calling out, where are you, God? And God says to each one of us, I am here. I am here in creation. I am here in the cross. I am here in the resurrection. I am here in my people. God is to be found. Don't stop looking. Let's pray. We praise you, O God, that you are our Father. We praise you, Lord Jesus, that you came to make God known. We praise you, Holy Spirit, that you live in us to make us more like Jesus. In these days of lockdown, with all the challenges that this brings, please help us to find you to know you and to serve you for the glory of your great name. Amen. And so let's pray together. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. 
as the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. May the risen Lord Jesus bless us. May he watch over us and renew us as he renews the whole of his creation. And may our hearts and lives echo his love. Amen.